many of you have heard of this man right here? Okay, pretty much all of us. For the few of you who might not know who this is, his name is LeBron James, and he is arguably the greatest NBA player of all time, also known as the GOAT. Now, how many of you recognize this woman? And please, don't worry if you don't, because frankly, neither do I. This is just a random... <laughs> This is just a random stock image I found on PowerPoint when I typed in women's basketball. My prediction, however, is that we'd have a pretty similar reaction when I actually showed you a picture of Diana Taurasi, one of the most influential women to ever play the game. Isn't it shocking how, when LeBron James came up, we all raised our hands? But when Diana Taurasi, a WNBA legend, comes up on the screen, we'd react as if it were just another stock image online. This appears to be the main problem with the lack of representation and opportunities in the WNBA. These athletes just don't have a name for themselves. Now, before I keep going, you're probably all thinking, why is a 17-year-old telling me all I need to know about gender inequity in professional basketball? So let me explain. Growing up in Spain, in a family filled with basketball enthusiasts, there was no way around it. You either played basketball or you played basketball. <laughs> I mean, Option C would have been emancipation, but that one didn't seem too appealing. I therefore spent the last 10 years of my life playing it, watching it, coaching it. Now, please note that when I say watching it, I mean watching the men's NBA, because like many other young girls out there, I didn't even know there was a WNBA. Then we moved to London, and I learned the hard way that basketball here is as popular as homework is in the summer. And when I did manage to find a club, I realized that training twice a week was just not enough for me. And so I started visiting outdoor courts, where girls are usually nowhere to be seen. And consequently, the guys there like to make comments about women's basketball. And because I love arguing and I love being right, I decided to make myself an expert so that I could do both, be right and argue. Now, I do want to clarify, I'm not here trying to convince any one of you that men and women should be paid equally. Because in a field such as basketball, it would be simply absurd. The NBA deals with billions of dollars every year, while the WNBA deals with a couple of millions annually. But I am strictly against the fact that the highest paid WNBA player, Jackie Young, is paid three times less than the minimum salary for a full-time contract in the NBA. This means that a WNBA's legends, three years of working, are equivalent to an NBA's bench warmers one year, just because she's a woman. But why is this the case? Let's break it down. Firstly, and I cannot stress this enough, media representation is one of the biggest contributors to the problem. I mean, why is the ESPN, the leading sport broadcaster, dedicating less than a pathetic 5% to women's sport? And yes, you've heard it right, women's sport. Imagine how little is being dedicated to professional female basketball. Now, in the rare occasion where the female athlete is being portrayed in the media, an embarrassing focus is being placed on her appearance. Imagine you just got an A star on a test and your teacher's asking you about your skincare. I mean, not that you don't have great skin, but you just feel discouraged and disappointed that your teacher didn't ask you about how much work you've been putting on, what resources did you use, or even congratulated you. All of that hard work, the behind the scenes of that impressive A star is being overpowered by the ridiculously random question about your skincare. But don't take my word for it, take Elena's, a current WNBA player. I just can't wait for the day where people want to talk about your skills on the court rather than your looks. What this should really be making us think about is the younger generation of girl athletes out there, because according to the social learning theory, behavior is learned through imitation of role models, people we identify with. Now, the female athlete is being portrayed in the media as negative stereotypes, while her male equivalent is being portrayed as the epitome of the strong, positive, resilient athlete. And this, when it comes to the likelihood of a young girl wanting to become a professional player, is extremely detrimental. Because, as Dr. Mitchley, a psychologist, nicely puts it, she's got to see it to be it. Another big problem is the fact that the WNBA only has 12 teams available, while the NBA has an astounding 30 teams and an additional 30 teams in their G League, which is their official minor league, something that's yet to be introduced in the WNBA. I've heard so many guys tell me that girls are just not interested in basketball, but I beg to differ, because the NCAA, which is the most popular sport university league in the world, has recently made the number of teams available for both genders equal. Not only this, but the NCAA is also progressively trying to provide the same resources and opportunities to all athletes, regardless of their gender. 
And with this kind of approach, the Women's March Madness semifinals, which is a really important basketball, university basketball tournament, brought in 2.5 million views, a number that is higher than any NBA game on ESPN this year. Not only that, but the Women's March Madness finals reached a viewership record high, while the men's finals reached a viewership record low, which just goes to show that the popularization of female basketball is exponentially increasing. Now, another big argument against women's basketball is the fact that women don't dunk, and therefore their games are not as entertaining as the men's. And this is not completely false. I mean, the NBA has on average 6.4 dunks per game, while the WNBA has only had 28 dunks in the history of its existence. Only seven women have managed to dunk a ball during a WNBA game. This means that the USA has had more people walk on the moon than women dunk a ball during a WNBA game. However, we've got to cut them some slack because in the 2022 season, the average height for a WNBA player was six foot tall compared to a staggering six foot six in the NBA. However, both leagues compete using the same 10 foot tall rim. So why don't we make women's hoops shorter? Allow them to have a better shot at dunking? No pun intended. You're probably all thinking, how can I help? I mean, unless you happen to work for ESPN or you happen to be a rim moderator for the WNBA, in that case, let's talk afterwards. <laughs> You're probably thinking, I don't see myself as part of the problem and therefore I don't really see how I can be part of the solution. But this is where we all come in because on the 8th of July, that is this Thursday, our newly discovered legend, Diana Taurasi, New York Liberty. So turn your TVs on. Even if you're not watching it, let it be background noise. Let's show these broadcasting systems that there is demand for female basketball. We don't just want to see Diana Taurasi play. We want to see her skills on the court being rewarded. We want to see her name in London adverts. And most importantly, we want equal opportunities to all athletes regardless of their gender. My guess is that, it, is that if we increase the views of these games, we'd be making of these athletes legends. Thank you.